You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. All right. The unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. Hmm. This is Detlef Schlich and today we dive into the unknown and exciting deep ocean with Tara Sherkin's art and mind. Sherkin Tara. Sherkin Tara. Yes. All right. So, okay. Hi, Tara. Hi, Des. How are you? I'm fine. So, so you know what? I'm going to put the candle on. I do. Make a very nice moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we're sitting here at the Lichine House. In Skibbereen. Do you know a little bit about the background of the Sheen House? Yes, it's a charity for suicide awareness. What I do later on, I put the telephone number and all the contact details into my podcast and you can get it from there. Cool. cool. Tara, great to be here. I mean, I must say I'm nervous, totally nervous somehow because it's my first podcast and I really... Well, it's my first ever interview, so I'm <laughs> equally as nervous <laughs> on this lovely wet day in uh, Skibbereen. Yeah. And it's actually the second time that we tried to come together because the first time was already last Wednesday, which no, was no, lashing, Friday. Lashing rain as well. And it was lashing, <laughs> and we both we both missed um, our schedule somehow. So I mean, I overseen, uh, I, I didn't look really on my timetable, so no bus was there from my place, uh, which is far away. And Tara gave me a ring then at twelve o'clock. And she said, oh, that left, so I have to leave Skibbereen at half one. So I said, right, right, Tara, we're going to do it sometimes later on, on next week, so Wednesday. So I went and bought this beautiful chair instead <laughs> <laughs> that I'm sitting on from yeah. Machine House. Yeah. And um, here we go. So so I'm already up since half four. So my concentration is already a little bit low now. So bear with me if, if I'm uh, getting a little bit lost. Tara, great. So we're sitting here, actually in the exhibition room of Tara's exhibition called Lockdown Frogs. Lockdown Frogs. So so we're sitting here surrounded by a lot of beautiful um, reptiles. Reptiles and amphibies and yeah. phibes <laughs> as well. So, so I'm going to get to that later on because I have a little quiz for, quiz for us. I looked up a little bit about reptiles and amphibies. Good. Can I dial a friend? What? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> Do <you? laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, cool. Tara. I would say we just first of all start probably with um the story behind your exhibition and later on we're gonna go maybe in some details and details and in, in, in some paintings and whatever in your life as well and 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 so i'm looking forward to to know more about it because i don't know what's going on here that makes two of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well the exhibition um actually originally started as the night of the iguana um and then between the madness of the COVID and the rest of the world and everybody cracking up, it kind of switched to lockdown frogs. Usually um, my art exhibitions have a theme and I try and stick to that. Um, my first one a few years ago was earrings for the frogs. Again, frogs, actually. I have a thing for frogs. Then I did the it elephant, like. the elephant in the room, a bull in the china shop, the fox in the hen house, the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, and this one now, the night of the iguana and lockdown frogs. And the latest one that I just started working on last week is um, 
I don't know, something to do with donkeys. I've kind of got a thing for donkeys and zebras at the moment. I saw one zebra actually in one, one of your, your, your paintings over there. Yes, I, what, what, yeah. What's the title? It's a... Uh, Which one? I don't know. It? What well, is the title of that? It's Zebra Hats. Ze yeah, zebra well, I, hats. Have, I have a fascination of putting hats on animals. Um, animals is a big, huge part of my work, actually, to be honest with you. Well, predominantly animals and color. I love and I'm I see that. I mean, yes. it, it, we are here. This room is so much full of color. And I think if you if you're going to go later on my podcast and probably on my YouTube page as well, you will see some of these paintings, these colorful paintings. Yes. yes. Well, I think that, you know, especially like a day today in Ireland, we have so much gray and rain and mist and which is beautiful as well. But I just color just uplifts me and enlights my soul and thank you very much i yeah. need that <laughs> oh good <laughs> i get really carried away with bright colors and yeah. you know just there's nothing better at home on a gloomy day than just painting like mad bright i agree i used to be like this in, in my early 20s in, in my 30s and then unfortunately it started that i was not happy anymore with painting in colors and yeah. it turned more it faded more into gray and brown and, and earthy colors so i really appreciate it if i see a lot of vivid colors in yeah. paintings you know just well yeah no and it's just it's you know it's uplifting and i get a bit carried away i remember i had a art teacher who told me to be careful of my colors and i'm like well that is what i'm about is color um i have no intentions i mean of i see it in the clothes so, so 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 we have a, a, a nice luminous pink top yes uh, uh with a with a with a, with a heart on it and and actually it looks like like you already have a little microphone on top <laughs> the, 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 the the pink one <laughs> it's a, it, but it's not one i think uh, that was just some mad darning i tried to fix it with <laughs> so, so you did that on your own no actually my friend did i can't darn that's a lie <laughs> i'd rather it's 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 half is, is it knitting yes yeah and it's, your, it's your friend did it Yeah, I would, there was a hole in it and I told her to patch it up with the brightest color she could possibly find. So, <laughs> yes. There's I a think, hole. I think I kind of, you know. In my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Dressed like a 14-year-old, really. But anyway, it keeps okay. me entertained. Fair enough, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Please. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, we have got so many, so many paintings here and uh i'm quite overwhelmed if i see them i mean you, you're not you're not just well, if i describe there like these ones rasta legs and lizard legs yeah um this was at the early part of um maybe i should just back up a bit um my mother came down to live with me for the first two months of the lockdown um because i live in the countryside and it was just easier for her you know she obviously couldn't do the things that she normally did and mind the grandchildren or go to mass or yeah. swimming pool. Yeah. So um, she goes to bed early and at night time I went into the studio and I was just doing loads and loads of work, really. Yeah. Um, you know, part of it was a bit upsetting because you're thinking, are, are these ever going to be shown and all the exhibitions that were cancelled? Yeah, and sure, sure, sure. Um, but anyway, I kept going, which was great. Um, and it kept me going, kept me sane. Actually, for someone who never uses black, I did kind of have, like everybody else, some moments of, yeah. you know, when you start seeing all the horrible stuff that was going on around the world, Absolutely. black did yeah. start coming into it, I have to say. But um, I see you don't have a lot of black in it. There's one, there's a little, some black Well, drops. this guy over here, lockdown frog, he got a bit black. Yeah. So that's kind of as deep as I got, but um, uh, yeah, uh, these ones with the bright blue and the bright green um, with the lizards and the hats. Yeah, um, they're like swimming through the sea. And then I started getting uh, uh, legs, all different kind of legs. I'm sorry, I should say I'm a collage artist. So I I'm cut out you, things. What? A collage artist. A, a collage artist. Yes. So, but, but it's not just collage. No, it? no, there's I mean, a lot of painting it's, behind it's it as well. It's mixed media as well, isn't it? You use, you use uh, color. And imagery and um, I have an obsession with cutting things out and finding things in magazines and photocopying them and enlarging them. And it's great fun. They become kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Like some of them I work yeah. really quickly. I usually work about with two or three at the one time. I don't just right. concentrate on one. Yeah. Um, and then I could cut like I have a file at home, you know, notebooks with like loads of hats in them and one's. Then musical instruments, I kind of started getting into p 
pianos and guitars and not that I know anything about musical instruments. So you really. don't play an, an, an no, instrument? No, my cousin does. All right. Um, I'm afraid no. Oh. I'm um like a horse crow, really. Would be <laughs> Can you sing? God no. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> Definitely oh, I actually not. wanted to sing a song with you today, but no. So you are happy because I forgot my guitar. No, I don't <laughs> sing and my friends would definitely vouch for that. But I do on moments have a bit of an ABBA moment. Bit of an ABBA fan. <laughs> or, uh, an ABBA fan. Yes, I love Okay, that. so so before the show before the end of the show, we have to to think about an ABBA. Want song. me to break into Fernando, do you? And yeah, we'll sing it then together. I think so, we'll uh, lose so, all the so, audience. So, so guys, if if you if you keep the next three shows because uh, <laughs> we have three shows with Tara, every show is supposed to be around 20 minutes. Um, if you really can stand it, then with us together at the end of the almost. No, I did not <laughs> sign up for that. <laughs> okay, then uh, I think it's singer for you. It's yes, <laughs> you can sing away. Uh, maybe one line. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. So yeah, so the lizards um, then kind of, as I said, became kind of, I don't know, lockdown frogs, reptiles in general. I was even going to go as far as snakes. But I decided a lot of people have phobias. Maybe I wouldn't go as far as snakes. Honestly. But even people, to be honest with you, have phobias about... Uh, I had an exhibition recently in I the mean, Yellow but, Door in yeah. Baltimore. And this woman walked in and she's, oh my God, is there lizards and iguanas here? Yeah. Right? And she ran out of the room. So I think she No they, way. I think she thought they were going to jump off the canvas or something. I don't know. Each to their own, uh, really. Uh, uh, you know. I uh, mean, I must I must say, I, I, I know that people people are somehow afraid about... about Reptiles and 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 and, and amphibs, was it? Am, am, amphibians, am, uh, amphibians, amphibians. I think. Uh, but yeah. Well, I mean, I have a phobia of cockroaches. I don't ever would ever, you know, want to see, you know. So the I beach, used, I we used, all to, have I our... used to be in Panama, and and I had cockroaches in my room, fifteen, thick like a thump. Yeah, you see, I'd be dead. Absolutely, uh, no, uh, really now. I mean, I, I, I'd be I, taken I, away from my own sanity. I, I, I was falling into sleep after a couple of bottles of beer, you know, because I was really scared. Like, I need, need a lot well. more than beer now <laughs> to get me through that type of an evening. <laughs> but yeah, so just going back to like people have, diff- you know, a lot of people don't like clowns or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I think most people do like frogs and lizards. Well, um, and a kind of the COVID thing. Just became a bit of a kind of not that, you know, we're blaming the animals for anything, but just kind of I did one painting and I sold it. But it was um, like kind of lizards and frogs on the big, you know, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and the Empire State Building and kind of lizards and um, amphibians taking over the world. I think that was kind of trying to represent the COVID and, you know, the Uh, just... Also, I've been gripped in kind of madness, really, I suppose, you did know, you, without you? getting too deep on the subject. <laughs> I know I don't do deep. That's, that's as deep as it gets. She's, okay. she's, she's, she's not doing deep. <laughs> that's she's, as deep she, as it she gets. She told me because I was wondering, should, should, can we go a little bit into a, a, a philosophizing direction? And no, I'm the opposite artist of that. I mean... There's no meaning in life. There's no hidden agenda behind my work. Um, it's kind of what you oh, see. Oh, I see a lot of hidden agenda. Well, it, oh, people you know? do, and people can look into that if they want. And people ask me to explain things. But like this one now over there. Um, what did I call that one? I do love uh, naming them. Blue listening. Blue listening. Blue, blue listening. And, and it is actually a lizard. Uh, it's a word play as well, isn't it? Listen. Well, it's an iguana. And there's a guitar going up over his head. Yeah. And then I might, I there's um, I might show it you later. a fantastic wig. Some kind of... That's like, great. Yeah. Did, did you paint that? Um, I painted the background. And a friend of mine, actually, who lives on Shirkin Island, Norman King, keeps me these mad designs every now and again. <laughs> and he saw this uh, wig yeah. or piece of hair. And yeah. he said, oh, you'd love that now for one of your pictures. And yeah. so I cut it out and... 
I really like that one, actually. I was surprised that one. It's nice, right. actually, if, if friends coming and, and inspiring you, isn't it? Hmm? So if friends are coming and inspiring you... Oh, it, a lot ideas. of people keep different things for me. And mm-hmm. um, especially if I go, uh, like, the elephant in the room, um, there was people p- collecting and, peop- you know, giving me elephant pictures. And, yeah. Um, the elephant in the room, yeah. Yeah, it, there's always kind of some kind of I like to keep it to a theme, as I said earlier, you know, and then I get obsessed with them, like the fox in the hen house and images of foxes and hens. And but they're not here. Uh, or No, that was an exhibition about two or three years ago. I must I must admit, I, I haven't seen any exhibition of you before, neither on, on, on Shirken Island. You should have done your research then. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find any research, so 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 I, I researched about you and I and I and I couldn't find a, a proper proper artist statement. And, I know, uh, I know. I'm afraid I'm very bad at all that kind of stuff. Uh, really, actually, very bad at promoting myself in general. Really, I, the easy part uh, is doing the artwork at home myself. That's the part I love. Uh, um, I mean, most artists are like this, you know, and and that is actually the reason why why I start I start a podcast. Well, that's a good idea, you know, yeah. because that podcasting, uh, podcasting is an incredible medium. I hope I or we can entertain, inspire, motivate, and educate listeners around the world. And uh, I think we're gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a challenge. It is really a challenge to to. Well, it is. It's, it's, you know, it's a different uh, mentality speaking about your work and doing your work you know um so i don't know i'd, I'd like to think that the work speaks for itself to be honest with you most and most can... of the art is doing that as well and and i agree with that in, in normally case people can see everyone can interpret what what i want yeah. you know? and i mean it's really in the eye of the beholder you know so what what, what it is no but it's know? good that you're getting our views out there as well you know yeah yeah i, I think i think and 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 sometimes what i've learned is um I mean, as I used to be younger, you know, I, I told people, well, you know what, so I don't give even a shit, so, so think about that, what you want, you know. And nowadays, I like it actually more to uh, create a discourse with my art, you know. So, so I'm, 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 I'm not so particular anymore when people come in, what is it about this and that and that, because I think it's necessary for us artists to create a discourse, because nobody's going to do that, you know. This is this is this is this is this is this no, and I mean, occasionally then there is things that spark me off, like uh, the images there behind you of the light bulbs. I'm calling things like light bulb moments over the frog yeah. um, and over the iguanas. Um, you know, I think we're all living through a light, uh, a light bulb moment at the moment, you know. So I suppose maybe there is part of me that gets a bit deep that I dare I say. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean... Uh, even if you probably don't want to hear yes, it, but I think, uh, th- I think maybe now that you mention this, maybe there is some part. I, I I think the work is very deep. I mean, I think uh, uh, Gustav Young would uh, tell you a lot about frogs and reptiles and everything, you know, because yeah. they, they have uh, they they're quite mythical figures. Yeah, well, general, you know, right? there's some of the oldest animals on the planet and. I, lo- I love all animals in general. I mean, the ones over there now, their earlier work uh, with the chickens and the giraffes. Um, yeah, the, the camels. All of them, they're all fascinating, yeah, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, I, I, I researched a little bit about that and I thought it would be nice to have a quiz in this show. Um, <laughs> and and uh, guys, you if you really guess what's, what's about, you get for myself... A handwritten postcard. Um, I send it to you, and I don't know. So, so if Tara's up for the second prize or what, we we gonna discuss. It I'm later. not gonna win any prize. Uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously. So, so can this, I just say pass? <laughs> listen, listen, good. Wow, what I say wow, now. Wow, 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 okay. Wow. So this is the educational part of attitude. Wow, 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 wow. I'm out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Education. Some examples of amphibians are frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders. Some examples of reptiles are turtles, snakes, lizards, alligators, and 
crocodiles. Mm, there is a good few crocodiles around the room. <laughs> I actually so so and from here, uh, regards to f my friends in Florida and in in California. Hi Via, hi Kath, because uh, Via explained me the uh, the difference uh, uh, between uh, alligators and reptiles. Uh, 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 crocodiles. Uh, crocodiles. I didn't know that, you know. So, so can right. you tell me so which one is this? Because I've called it crocodile lagoon. Is that an alligator or is that a crocodile? Ah, to be honest, I, I don't know. I have to ask Via. Via, <laughs> you have to tell me what it is. You know. However, so the quiz is the question is you know so you, you just listened uh, and distinguished the uh, reptiles and and the uh, amphibians. You know, so. A zoo's herpetarium contains the following animals: seven snakes, four frogs, two geckos, three turtles, six lizards, one salamander two toads and three alligators. How many amphibians and how many reptiles are at the zoo? Guys, <laughs> you have to figure it out. This is it for today. So I hope you, you're gonna you're, you're gonna take part in today's again as well. Thank you very much, Tara. This was very, very, very... And get a calculator for the next interview. <laughs> and uh, yeah, do. And... Uh, <laughs> An encyclopedia <laughs> as well, maybe, would be good. Yeah. I hope to see you guys all together soon. Goodbye. Cheerio. This is a listener-supported show. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in Friday for the second part of this weekly audio trip dish. I feel honored if you subscribe to this show. You can follow me non-financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe to the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link below. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude Podcast account. Eventually, I would like to thank through this medium all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world just to remember myself that without you this year couldn't and wouldn't happen you have listened to Artie Jude West Cork's first art fashion and design podcast Never so close again. Ah. That was too close.